in-memory databases had a substantial impact. Why? There's a lot of data, but all different types of data. External data, internal data, there's social data, there's real-time data, there's IoT data, and all this data needs to be available for processing, processing algorithms on top of it and providing insights on it. And in-memory databases provide this accessibility, fast accessibility that's required for providing the insights in real time and for providing the algorithms on top of it. So if you look to limitations from in-memory databases, it's impossible to do everything in memory in a database. You cannot buy just unlimited number of terabytes to have it in memory. So if you cannot use this, then it's impossible to run all your algorithms on top of it because you cannot access all the different types of data and especially the real-time data, especially the very large volumes of data with IoT data. So there's a limitation of cost and of total cost of ownership. If you look to the requirements from in-memory databases and persistent memory, it's the availability of data in real time, huge amounts of data, real-time data, internal data, external data, experience data, all different type of formats. So how does it impact it? It makes the availability of many much more formats that are nowadays on the market in real time because you can store substantial amounts of data, for example, six terabytes in memory and make it available. And you can use data tiering for having hot data, which you need accessible immediately, lukewarm data and cold data. And you can tier this data in different ways. So this is how persistent memory makes the data available for fast processing of algorithms and of fast processing of insights.